how do you stop the voice of Satan in your heart? Now, now the Lord made your heart for constant conversation. And so your heart, it needs to hear. It needs to know. It needs to have a experience with the Father constantly. Your heart always has to be in the place of enjoying a conversation with the Word of God. The only way you can stop Satan in your heart is through gratitude. Gratitude is something that the Father gave to you as a weapon in the spirit to stay in his will mentally. You stay in God's will through gratitude. The way that you keep yourself out of the flesh, out of the demonic, It's to gratitude. If you don't keep on giving God thanks, your mind accumulates filth automatically. You don't even have to talk to someone bad. Your mind just automatically if goes. You don't keep on giving God thanks. It goes in the bad realm. And so the secret to operating in a constant, constant victory in your heart and deliverance is that you have to be thankful. You stop Satan in your mind by choosing honor. Honor is always celebrating who God pits in your life. Being respectful always liberates you. If you're a respectful person, be slow to criticize. Be slow to criticize. And if you ever see any issues in someone, know your level of authority in their life. If your authority is not to change them, or even if your authority is to change them, Meaning that you have an equation to impart to them. You don't be bothered by their reaction. You stop Satan in your heart through patience. You have to constantly be patient. And patient is the rejection for hasty choices, hasty choices. Patience is the rejection for hasty choices. Always remember that hastiness leads to craziness. Hastiness leads to craziness. So whenever you start becoming hasty, your decision making, it leaves the spirit. When you become hasty, your decision making, it leads, it, it leaves wisdom. You do not follow wisdom when you're hasty. Hasty people are crazy people. So patience is how you stop the devil in your heart. If you remember, the word of God said, turn these stones into bread. That's what Satan told King Jesus. It wasn't the time for that. If King Jesus wasn't patient, he would have said, patient, he would have said, okay, I'll show you. I'll show you what I can do. I'll show you what I can do. I'll show you what this mouth can do. I'll show you what this mouth can do. But instead, King Jesus chose patience. 
Joseph chose patience as well. It says, until the word of the Lord came to pass. Until the word of the Lord came to pass. He stayed in the proper reaction. The proper spirit. He was joyful in jail. Joy stops the devil. You know, joy is an unconditional mentality. Is an unconditional mentality. Joy is an unconditional mentality. So when you're in joy, your attitude is not dependent on people or situations or finances or health. When, when you operate in joy, even if you get sick, you still got the right attitude. Even if you have financial issues, you still have the right attitude. That's what happens when you have joy. Joy is an unconditional mentality. Nobody can stop you if you have joy. Because joy means that you're focused on the word. Joy means that you're focused on the word. Joy means that you are rejoicing in God constantly. Your adoration of him is intensifying. Joy means that the father is the only credible voice. The father is the only credible voice in your life. Because even the prophet is the voice of the father. That means that you only heed the father's voice joy means that you only heed the father's voice peace is the magnitude and the effect the sound effect of the voice of God over your situations over your mind frame peace is the magnitude it's the effectiveness of God's voice in your heart. When you're operating in peace, that's the magnitude of God's voice saturating you. Peace is the resistance of worldly news. Peace is the resistance of news from people that are of the world. Peace is the resistance of worldly news and it is the rejection of news from people that's of the world. Meaning you got somebody that talks to you and they not surrender to Jesus. You reject the information that they give you about life because if they can't yield to Jesus and he's true nothing that comes from them will be beneficial to you and because God lives in you he'll let you feel his reaction to people that's not of him their words are turds instead of birds. <laughs> Moving along strong. You stop the voice of Satan in your heart when you choose to be peaceful. Anybody can start a battle. But only the wise can finish a battle. Even when a fool starts a battle, it never ends. A battle is dissolved through wisdom. A battle is dissolved through a wholesome individual. Someone that has a wholesome perspective. That's the only way a battle is stopped. Through someone that has understanding. Understanding is the maturity of a person. 
Understanding is freedom from feuds. Understanding is freedom from strife. It's deliverance from distractions. Understanding minimizes your flaws. It delivers you from weaknesses. Understanding keeps you from compulsive and destructive pathways. Understanding gives you weapons for your mind. Understanding gives you weapons for your mind. Man, I need to go back there because it got good lighting. Understanding is, is a weapon for your mind. It's also a mind mantle. It's an emotional mantle. The therapy of your mind is good understanding. Catch that. The therapy of your mind is good understanding. I want to say this to you that you should pray for wisdom and understanding so that you don't become irritating to God. Pray prayers like this. Father, give me wisdom so that I always please you. Give me wisdom and understanding so that my behavior doesn't disturb you. Solomon didn't want wisdom to come out of debt. Solomon didn't want wisdom of how to defeat his enemies. Solomon wanted wisdom to know how to keep on satisfying the father with his behavior and his decision making. And he learned that from his biological dad, which was King David, because it was King David that told That he would not hurt the Lord's anointed. He made a decision to behave wisely. So you see that that wisdom that makes God happy with you. It was genetic. And that goes also when a man of God is actually your biological dad. When a man of God is your biological dad. Because King David transferred the genetics of running after God. He, he, he was carrying the genetics of going after God. So there was a transference of hunger from King David to Solomon. There was a reason why King David knew that Solomon was his successor. He had many sons. He had many children. But he knew that Solomon was his successor. It wasn't just because this was his child. It was because it was his son. There's a difference. He had many children. But only Solomon was his son when you are a son that means that you can be fathered trained taught corrected directed perfected without feeling molested sons don't think that their father is taking advantage of them Spiritually, I'm not talking about no physical, right? I'm not talking about no physical. <laughs> I'm not talking about no Adam and Steve. 
All right? This is not the prison, Damon. Solomon was not just his child. He had many children. He had his... He Solomon was his son. So Solomon was being mentored by King David. There's a difference. So... That's how you see that King Jesus was not just a child of God. He was a son of God. Meaning that the father was able to train this flesh and blood how to operate only in the spirit 24-7. And so now you know why Solomon was chosen to be the king. Because he was being trained by his father. If you look at Proverbs, you'll see that Solomon is often talking about what his father said, what his mother said. He was an attentive child. Now, mind you, who was Solomon's mother? It was Bathsheba. Sexy Bathsheba. And her name was prophetic because he met her while she was taking a bath. Which shows you that you can't be no virtuous woman if you don't take no bath. I'm going to tell you that right now. See? See? Some of y'all, what time it is you ain't take no bath yet? Huh? What is about, what is about, it's about a good seven. You ain't take no bath yet? I won't hear it. That's, you hear what I said? That's an issue. That's a whole issue. It's a whole issue. You can take no bath. Bathsheba. Bathsheba. She. Be. A. Bath. You flip it around. Bathsheba. She. Bath. Now, the first time he saw Bathsheba, she was naked. He saw her naked, okay? Or the, the time that was, that, that may not have been the first time, but it was magnified to him when she was naked. Now, which, what I want you to see is this. He saw Bathsheba in the realm of intimacy, which is powerful in itself. There's a spiritual implication to this. He saw her in the place of withholding nothing. She was not hiding from him. She was naked. Not to say that she was naked on purpose for him. She was taking a bath. But the place that he spotted her was in the place where nothing was keeping her. She was naked. She was not hidden, concealed. Which also shows you that these are the type of people that the Father anoints to carry His promises, His visions. People that are naked before Him. You're not hiding from God. You acknowledge God. You confront Him. When I say confront Him, you find out what does he want? And if you don't hear him, you run after him. See, there are two types of people when in the realm of seeking God. There are people that seek God, then they faint because they don't feel they're, they're getting, they're, that they're getting results. But then there are people that seek God, and even when he hides himself, they run after him stronger. Those people are wiser. Those are the ones with oil in their lamps those that run after him. Now I want to say this, that Solomon met Bathsheba while she was naked because he was assigned to be a covering to her. Now this is fresh revelation, like you're not going to hear this revelation nowhere. Solomon was assigned to cover her. 
He was her clothing in the spirit. He was her garment. So it was good that he met her naked because he was going to cover her spiritually, physically, in every aspect. Now, I want to also say this to you, that Solomon was so wise, he knew that he was destined to be her covering, that he wanted to kill her husband because he leaned to his own understanding. So he violated Proverbs 3. And that's why God dealt with him, because James say, if you know that it is sin, he that knows to do good and does it not, it is sin. So Solomon violated his own wisdom. He leaned to his own understanding. God was going to give him Bathsheba either way. He didn't have to kill that, that, that man. He didn't have to kill the man. God was going to give him Bathsheba anyway, because the covenant that King David and Solomon had with God was that God gave them what they wanted. That's the covenant that they had with God. That shows you that when you lean to your understanding, your own understanding, you kill things that's not supposed to be killed. If you take a note, write that down. And it's the Solomon principle of killing Bathsheba's husband, her man. When you lean to your own understanding, you kill things. What is not supposed to be killed? God rebuked Solomon because he wasn't supposed to kill that man, but he leaned to his own understanding. When you lean to your own understanding, you murder things, you abort things that's supposed to live. You kill Satan in your heart when you acknowledge God. Go to the Father and ask him questions. Don't make your own reactions, especially if you're in the presence of someone divine. Let me just say this to you. You can be around somebody. They don't have no connection to God. You can do certain reactions, right? In the, the election, like you could do the little tootsie slide. And God will dot, dot, dot. But when you're in divine presence, your reactions are way more investigated. That's the word. It's investigated. So God will look at what you did and be like. That's why you have to know who you're in the presence of. You see what I'm saying? And so there could be five musicians and they could be joking around because they are they're around um, somebody doing a Beethoven audition but say a man of God calls them if they play around it comes underneath investigation you see what I'm saying when they was with Beethoven they did that stuff the Beethoven audition dot 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 but now they're in the present they're in divine presence now the stuff get investigated by God and they go on trial you see what I'm saying? And so I think that's one of the issues that a lot of people have done. Like you might got boyfriends, right? Or you might got a girlfriend. And your girlfriend probably knows you probably been around girls. They were city girls. But say you get around a girl that fears God and she loves God and you don't know God what happens is the stuff come underneath investigation by God you can have many boyfriends and the boyfriends can be uh, they can like not know God 
But if you get a man that's a man of God, the stuff will come under the investigation. It decides, it, 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 it matters whose presence you're in. If you're in the presence of someone that is a representative of God, now God investigates it. And he don't investigate stuff like man. Man, look at who's crying. Man, look at who's who's sympathetic. Man looks at who's who's uh, appearance seem like they are the victim. But God looks at the heart. That's what he looks at. He looks at the heart. You have to know who you're in the presence of. That's also how you stop the devil. If I'm in the presence of a man of God, God will never speak to me against that man of God. If I hear God is the God of this age. Because now this voice is causing me to violate scriptures. Now I have to dishonor this man of God. I have to disrespect him if I'm going to listen to this voice. You see this? I have to disrespect God. I have to dis disrespect the man of God to listen to the voice. I have to harm the man of God to listen to the voice. So hereby I know that the voice is not from God. Because now I have to go against the word. Touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Now I have to go against the word to obey this voice. So you stop Satan's voice in your heart when you know who you're in the presence of. When you know who you're in the presence of. Why do people stop speeding when they're on the streets? Because they see the cops. So what happens? They know who they're in the presence of. If they don't see no cops, they just speed and speed and speed. But say somebody speeding and then they see the cops. They stop speeding because they know who they're in the presence of. While they're in the presence of bystanders on the road, it does not concern them that they're speeding. Because they know that the people that they're speeding beside does not have the authority to stop them from speeding. But when they get in the presence of the cops, their reaction changes. Uh oh, the cops right there. Because they know who they're in the presence of. Some people's presence carry authority. Some people's presence carry no authority. If that man went go catch the ark, it would have been okay. But because he's in the presence of a man of God and he goes and catches the ark, God deals with it differently. If you notice, it's because the man of God's presence that God investigates the man closer. If Akon had went go take items without Joshua in the equation, Akon would still would have been living. But because he's in the presence of a man of God, the man of God goes to God and God says, let's kill him. You know, I, um, the it, it's so amazing because when you get in wisdom, you start watching your words. You know, sometimes you, you hear stuff like, you know, murderers and killers and da, da, da. But. When you get in wisdom, you start realizing that God actually had people kill as an instruction.
And so I want I want you to also remember this, that the more wisdom you have, the more your words are more accurate to describe what God wants to describe. Because David was anointed to kill. That was his job description. <laughs> Imagine 1 800 kill a nig dot Jerusalem. Ring. Hey, this King David, uh, what would what you need? Uh, the King David services. But that was his anointing. Warriors, mighty men of value. This is their anointing. The wiser you become, the more fruitful you become. Fools are often distracted. Their fruit system becomes corrupted. A fool does not produce anything for God. Because what makes you a fool is your distraction from God. What makes you a fool is that you're distracted from God. What makes you wise is that you're distracted from the devil. What makes you a fool is that you can't focus on God. What makes you wise is that you can't focus on the devil. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I thank you. You're guarding your heart. You don't just thank God, but also realize who empowered you to thank God. Who empowered you to thank God? Lord, thank you for this. Who empowered you for this? There's always someone in the earth that is anointing you to be happy. And so I guard my heart from Satan when I know who's not Satan, who is Jesus, and I can rejoice over how I respond to them that it brings pleasure to God off of how I deal with them because I get to deal with Jesus when I deal with them so if I deal with them righteously if I serve them if I sow into them if I submit to them I'm doing it to King Jesus so guess what happens? I feel Jesus every time I do it. I receive Jesus every time I do it. I know Jesus every time I do it. You can't know Jesus until you meet him in this life. Through a person. I'm going to say this again. You can't know Jesus. Until you meet him in this life. Through a person. All that church going. Reading Bible. Sunday school. Bible study. Shut-ins. All that different type of stuff. You can't know Jesus until he tests you through a person. Well, I prayed. That's how I got to know God. No, no, no. You get to know God, not because you prayed. You get to know him because he's going to test you through a person on earth. That's how you get to know him. That's how you get to know him.
you think that King Jesus is going to let you into his VIP? And no test? VIP and no test? Who lets anybody in their VIP without getting tested? So you're telling me somebody in the VIP section and they just let everybody walk through the VIP just because they call on them? Hey, I know you. Hey, what's up? Man, I want you. Just because somebody say they want you, you think that you say, okay, open up the VIP and let them come in. No. That person has to be tested, tried, investigated before they can come into the VIP. Now imagine King Jesus, creator of the universe, the king over everything, God over everything. And just because you pray a prayer, you think he gonna let you into his VIP? He gonna test you. That's why I said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. Think it not strange. Don't think that it's strange because it's a part of the path to being a friend of God. You stop the voice of Satan in your heart if you're truly a friend of God because you know that anything that will stop me from getting close to him, it is an adversary to me. Even if it's information, even if it's my feelings, even if it's my family. If it stops me, if it brings me into another world, another mindset, another focus, another appetite, another desire, another conversation, another dream. It's an adversary to me. If my dream to be a friend of God dies around you. I know that I'm not supposed to be around you. You're going to meet King Jesus in this life through a person. And he's going to talk to you through that person. He's going to walk with you through that person. And if you miss that person. Don't think for one minute that the father going to let you into heaven. He not. The father ain't no fool. <laughs> the father ain't no fool. The person is actually there to try you to see if you fit for heaven. Saints, I want you to think about this. Remember the queen of Sheba saw Solomon's servants and said, oh, they serve Solomon and dot, 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 and dot, dot, dot. Imagine this. Say like there's five of Solomon's servants and they turn against Solomon. And while they turn against Solomon in their life, they become so close to God. How? <laughs> but do you know what God can do? He's saying you're a strong delusion to believe a lie. One of the most scariest parts of King Jesus that I found out is that King Jesus told me that when he doesn't want someone to repent, He will make you believe a lie. Because he don't even want you to tell him sorry. That's what he told me when he marked people as his enemies, whether it be male or female, child or adult. He pits in their mind. information that has no conviction in it. 
That's why child of God, if your conscience leaves you, it is the scariest day of your life. The Bible said about Judas that it was better that he was never born. Now that's a scary statement. Why would the Bible say it would have been better? Jesus said it would have been better if he was never born. Because when his conscience had left him, King Jesus didn't even pit in him. Don't get the 30, don't get the 30 shekels. King Jesus wasn't trying to do that. King Jesus had wiped his hands. So the whole point of you knowing this is so that you yourself will never get to this point. So that you yourself can make a decision that I don't want to ever have that be bestowed upon me to lose the voice of God. To lose his favor. To lose his conversation. The fear of God preserves. God's desire to keep on talking to you. And the fear of God. It creates self-restraint. The fear of God. It quickens you to realize who you're talking to. Who you're connected to. And is this connection. Taking me to hell or heaven. And is this connection stopping me. From connecting. With who has been sent from heaven. For me. Everybody in this life. In this life. You'll have several people sent from the devil. But you'll always have a person sent from God himself. 